Hi, this is Chandra and uh, in this series of lecture we will be doing the topic simple and compound interest. To start off with, let us learn the different terms involved, uh, which I am sure most of you would be knowing. There is just one point to highlight that, principle. Principle will be denoting by P and the unit in which it is measured is rupees. So it is a quantity that specifies money, rupees of money, right? This is the only term which would require a little um, explanation depending upon whether it is simple or whether it is compound interest, right? So, principle is the amount, the amount, I again repeat, it is on some sum of money on which the interest is calculated, on which interest is calculated, paid or calculated. So, uh, in comes the fund, the interest. Obviously, the topic is interest, right? So, whenever we keep some money in the bank, we are lending our money to the bank to use. So, the bank is going to give us a interest, right? Or if we take loan from the bank, we are using the bank's money. So, we have to pay a charge for using the money. That's called an interest, right? So, the interest is going to be calculated on some money. On what money is it calculated? On the principal money, right? Out of whether. At what there is a rate that is predetermined. At what rate are we going to have an interest, right? This is a percentage and this is a percentage of what value, right? This is a percentage of the principal, right? So, if the bank offers me a rate of 10%, we'll say 10% of what value? 10% of the principal. And again, it is usually, whether it is specified, if it is not specified, it is usually per year. So, this much is a rate that the bank will give me, this much percent of the principal and this full amount is every year that I would be getting, right? So, third term is time, which, I'm, uh, which will denote by T. Time could be measured in anything, years, usually. It could also be fraction of a year, that is month, it could be weeks, it could be days, any measure of time as such, right? But we'll limit ourselves to years and months. And finally, there's a term called amount. Now, this amount is a generic term, right? Is a general that what we use, an amount of money or sum of money or sum of money. Whereas, uh, the amount out of a year with a capital A is a specific term, right? And the question made, right, the amount that I keep in bank does not mean this amount. It simply means the generic term, right? So, using the context, you would have to understand the meaning of amount. Amount is nothing but the principal value plus the interest, right? So, uh, there is some money that I have kept in the bank, that is the principal that I have lent to the bank, right? When the bank pays me an interest, the bank is going to return me, he is going to pay me an extra interest and he is also going to return me the money that I lent him, right? So, the together, two together is going to become the amount, right? Now, there are two ways that interest can be calculated, either simple or compound. So, let's start with simple interest. Let's learn simple interest through actual calculations, how bank would do. So, let's say I keep in a principal amount of rupees 1000 in bank. Uh, at the start, so I have deposited 1000, I have lent 1000 and bank and me have agreed on terms that the bank will pay me a rate of interest of 10% simple interest per annum. So, what is going to happen in different years? So, let's start with the first year itself. The first year, it need not be specified. The principal is going to be the amount that I have lent. Bank is using this amount, 1000, right? So, the interest as per our contract is 10% of going to be of 1000, which is going to be rupees 100. So, interest is the 100 rupees is what I get, right? A amount due to me at the end of the year. Let's say at the end of the year, I close the contract. Then how much money would it be due to me? It is not only the 100 rupees that I have earned, but the bank also has to return me the original amount, right? Uh, so, the bank will pay me an amount of 1000 plus 100, that is 1100 rupees, right? This is your first year simple straight out of here. Now, coming to the second year, if I decide to continue for the second year also, the bank is going to consider the principal as rupees 1000 itself. This 
is the meaning of simple interest. I'll highlight it when we go to the next year again, right? So the in principle, the interest is at 10%, 10% of what? Of principle. What is the principle? 1000, right? So in the second year also, I earn an interest of 100 rupees. So if I say the cumulative interest so far, so from the start, I have earned 200 rupees, 100 in the first year, 100 in the second year. So how much is due to me? The 200 is only the interest part, doesn't mean that he will not give me the original money, right? So there are a few students who have this confusion between amount, I don't know why, so I am specifying it. Bank has to return the original money to me. So the amount due to me is 1200 and that's the end of the story for the second year. For the third year and it will continue, will stop out of here. What is the principal money? Now look at it. Like the amount due to me is rupees 1200. So logically speaking, what worth of my money is left with the bank? It is 1200, right? The bank owes me this much money, but the bank is going to consider the principal or the, the interest is going to be calculated on what money on only what I had kept originally, what I lent it originally. That is the meaning of simple interest, right? So, uh, 1000 is the principal even for the third year and the interest will be again 10% of the principal which is simply 1000. So, I get rupees 100 itself again, right? So, the cumulative interest so far uh, is going to be 300 for all the three years. So, the bank owes me an interest of 300 and an original amount of 1000. So, the bank due to me is 1. Amount due to me is 1300, right? And this will continue. So, the salient points to learn what is happening in simple interest. First, simple interest, the principle is always the amount that I have kept initially. And I am always going to get 10% of this 10% of this amount always. So, what happens is the interest in every year I am going to get is 100, 100, 100. We will highlight this when we see compound interest again. However, I hope you understood what is, how do we calculate simple interest. Now, let us formalize this through a formula. Based on the table that we just saw, uh, we can say that if it is a case of simple interest, then for any year, for any one year, so, we could be the third, fourth, tenth, whichever year, the interest is going to be nothing but R percent of P principal, where principal is the money that I kept in the first year, right? So, this much I get in every year, for any one year, right? So, for a period of, for T years, so for T years, consecutive years, every year I am going to get R percent of principal, second year again, third year again, for T years, so into T. So, this is going to be my interest and this is your classic formula that every, I hope most of us remember from our school days, P R T by 100, that by 100 is for the percentage, right? P R N by 100 or P R T by 100, I will use T for time. Now, the only thing that I could add a value here is, remember this formula is for interest, is for interest and I am highlighting it again. The problem will happen only out of a year. This is interest, it is not the amount, not the amount. By amount, I mean the total money due out of a year, right? So keep this in mind, this is where the difficulty will be there, right? I am starting off with a very easy question. You might not appreciate this point again, but from the third or fourth question onwards, all I am saying is this is the only place where examiners are going to try to fool you. PRT by 100 refers to the simple interest. Yeah, repeat it a couple of times. PRT by 100, always keep in mind, is the left hand side your interest money, just the extra money that you have, right? An absolute simple question to start with. I take a loan of 12 lakhs at simple interest from a bank for 3 years. At the end of 3 years, I make a one time payment of 15 lakh rupees and close the loan account. Find the rate of interest. So, uh, I take a loan of 12 lakhs. So, my principal is going to be 12 lakhs. Rate, the question is asking me to find at 3 years. Right? So, PRT by 100. So, there is hardly anything out of a year. And PRT by 100 refers to the 
interest. So could I say this is 15 lakh rupees? This is where I would go wrong. I repeat, the 15 lakh rupees is the amount, is the amount. I make a one-time payment of 15 lakh. This 15 lakh is going to be the loan that I took of 12 lakh plus the extra money that I have to pay, plus the interest part. Right? So 15 lakh is not the interest. I have made a payment of 15 lakh, but that 15 lakh also includes the 12 lakh that I am returning. Right? So the interest amount, so the interest amount is only 3 lakhs. And I repeat, PRT by 100 refers to, sorry, PRT by 100 refers to the interest part, which is nothing but 3. So 3, 3 cancels out. From here we get R is equal to 100 by 12 which is nothing but 8.3333%. This is the rate of interest, right? So, questions on simple interest are very easy. You just need to use these formulas. So, I'm not going to, especially when two or three values are given and the fourth value is asked. I'm not going to do such questions anymore. I'll just do a few specific interesting questions of simple interest.